And hey, welcome back to Hannity as we continue with Texas Senator, arrested Texas Senator Ted Cruz. Uh, I'm assuming here, Senator, I know you sound, you're, you're voicing some optimism, but I, my prediction is Corker and McCain and company, they're not going to vote no on cloture tomorrow. Um, I don't think you're going to get the 41 votes that you need. You only need 41 of the 46. And I'm assuming this is going to then be, they're going to strip out the defunding provision in the House CR and they're going to send it back to the House. Do you have any inclination what will happen from there? Well, it's a good question. You may be, well be right in your prediction. I mean, if everyone who has vocally said that he was going to vote for cloture does so, uh, then Harry Reid will get the votes he needs to fund Obamacare. Now, now, there are a lot of senators that I think are still on the fence. So, so let me tell your, your viewers, if you go to don'tfundit.com, if you click on the links to go onto the Facebook page and Twitter pages and make phone calls to the senators that, 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 that are listed there, it can still make a real difference. But if you're right, if tomorrow we don't hold 41 Republicans, then Harry Reid will successfully fund Obamacare in the Senate. Bill will go back to the House. Yeah. And then that's where the fight is, is going to have to really be fought. You know, I'm so encouraged that last Friday, House Republicans stood united. They did the right thing. They defunded Obamacare. And when it goes back to the House, uh, I, I hope and believe House Republicans will continue to stand their ground. And if they do, I think we can win this fight because every day, the momentum is with us. The American people are getting energized, getting engaged. And you know what, Sean? The truth is on our side. Millions of Americans are at risk of losing their jobs or not getting a job to begin with. Or they are finding themselves pushed into part-time work. They're facing skyrocketing health insurance premiums. And they have either been threatened with or at risk of losing their health insurance. And, you know, one of the strategies that those folks who don't want to defund Obamacare are doing is they try to make it all personal. They try to have it be about personal attacks and personalities and back and forth. And it's not about any politician in Washington. It's about the fact that Obamacare isn't working and the American people are hurting. And if we can get politicians in Washington to listen to the American people, to listen to their constituents, that's how we're going to change things here in Washington. You know, we've tried to outline in this program how much more it's going to cost people. And instead of a $2,500 savings, it's a $7,500 increase in premium on yep. average across the country, family of four. Um, and how unsustainable. The CBO says it'll bankrupt, uh, bankrupt us. And you said uh, on the floor the other night, even big labor's now come on board. Have you ever spoken to those guys? I'm just curious. You know, I haven't. We've reached out to some of them, but we haven't been able to connect those dots. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I will say this. I made a prediction in the filibuster, and it's not a prediction I like, which is that if we aren't successful in standing up and defunding Obamacare, the prediction I made is before the end of this his second term, President Obama will grant an exemption for big labor also. He's already granted an exemption for big business. He's already doubt. granted an exemption for Congress. And I think labor has been told, just, just wait a little while. It's not a good time politically. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, you know, look, I don't think this should be about the politically powerful getting exemptions, getting special treatment, Congress having, as Dick Durbin put it, a first-class health care, and the American people getting stuck back in coach, or actually it's more like the baggage compartment. <laughs> we shouldn't have any exemptions, and if they're going to exempt big business in Congress, they should exempt every American. Well, and even Joe Manchin agreed at least to a one-year delay today, which I thought was interesting. Let me ask you one question about the debt ceiling before I let you go, Senator. Um, yeah. Let me first take you back to the year 2006. Let me read to you the words of President, then Senator Obama. The fact that we're here today to, to debate raising America's debt limit is a sign of leadership failure. It's a sign that the U.S. government cannot pay its own bills. Over the past five years, our federal debt has increased by $3.5 trillion to $8.6 trillion. That's trillion with a T. This rising debt is a hidden domestic enemy. Then in 2007, when he was running for president, here's him in his own words. The problem is, is that the way Bush has done it over the last eight years is to take out a credit card from the Bank of China in the name of our children, driving up our national debt from $5 trillion for the first 42 presidents. Number 43 added $4 trillion by his lonesome so that we now have over $9 trillion of debt that, that we are going to have to pay back. $30,000 for every man, woman, and child. That's irresponsible. It's unpatriotic. 
Well, now we're at $17 trillion, and, and he's added close to $7 trillion himself. And he's saying if you do the very thing that he did just a few years ago, that that's blackmail. Really? Well, remember the days when, when we had $9 trillion in debt, and, and he said it was unprincipled and unpatriotic. Now he's, 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 we're nearly double that. And, and listen, Sean, what we're doing is, is fundamentally immoral. I mean, our national debt has grown over 60% under President Obama. It's larger than the size of our whole economy. And, and if we don't pull back, our kids, our grandkids, they're going to spend their whole working lives not meeting the challenges of the future, not meeting their priorities, just paying off our debts. And, and no generation in American history has ever done that. Our, our parents didn't do that to us, Sean. Their parents didn't do that to them. And I know there are millions of Americans across this country who don't want to do that to our kids and grandkids. And, and yet, President Obama and the Senate Democrats, they don't even acknowledge there's a problem. I mean, the president just recently said, we don't have a debt problem. Well, I, th I think you and I have a very different definition of a debt problem, and the American people have a very different definition of a debt problem than does President Obama and the Senate Democrats. All right, Senator Cruz, glad you stood up this week for principle, and we're going to be watching very closely tomorrow, and uh, then we'll be watching the House after that, I, I, I venture. We'll see. Thank you so much, and I uh, hope you get some more rest over the weekend, if you can. Thank you for being with us. Thank you, my friend, and thank you for everything you're doing.